police this afternoon. Fargo police are now calling a woman's death over the weekend a homicide. And their person of interest in the case should be considered a risk to public safety. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us. I'm Christine Stanwood. Investigators spent the night at the home of a woman whose body was found by a friend. Police got the call around 7 p.m. yesterday from a home in the 1500 block of 34th Street South. That's the neighborhood between the Fargo Cashwise grocery store and Prairie Wood Golf Course. The victim is identified as 40-year-old Corey Terlecki. An autopsy is being performed today to determine the exact cause of her death. Police say 22-year-old Landon Lawagi is a person of interest in the case. They say he should be considered a public safety risk because they aren't sure of his mental or emotional state. Luwagi is six feet tall and about 215 pounds. If you know of his whereabouts, contact Fargo Police or your local law enforcement. Police are holding a news conference at 1.30 o'clock today. Stick with Valley News Live on air and online for developments on this breaking news story. And Fargo Police are holding another news conference with other agencies, including the U.S. Attorney's Office, later today. That one's at 3 o'clock, and they say it's about opiate enforcement and prosecution strategies. And new at noon, the North Dakota Highway Patrol has identified a man killed in a rollover yesterday in Botano County. Troopers say 24-year-old Cody Block of Botano died when the pickup he was driving left Highway 47 and rolled. Block was ejected after his pickup caught on fire after the impact. Police were notified about the crash around 2 o'clock Sunday morning, but it's not clear exactly what time the crash happened. Also new at noon, the victim of a shooting outside a Lakes Country Bar remains in critical condition at a Fargo hospital this afternoon, but his wife on Facebook is saying he's expected to make a full recovery. The suspected shooter is in jail. 48-year-old Michael Spildy of Battle Lake is being held on charges of attempted murder and terroristic threats. Police say he shot 28-year-old Philip Cast, also a Battle Lake, outside the Rusty Nail Bar around closing time yesterday morning. Cast was life flighted to Fargo. Spilby was taken into custody at his home on Sunday. People have 10 business days to comment on the Minnesota DNR's final environmental impact statement for the proposed Fargo-Moorhead flood diversion project. In the statement just released this morning, the DNR says a particular concern is how the project would impact the area upstream of the dam. The FM Diversion Authority is proposing two dams to protect the metro area from high water, one on the Wild Rice River and the other on the Red. You can read the DNR statement on valleynewslive.com. Just click on this story. Two people are in jail after a short chase in South Moorhead overnight that ended when the suspect smashed into the flood wall. 22-year-old Marvin Shelton and 19-year-old Brianna Hidgedem, both of Fargo, are facing numerous charges, including fleeing and drug charges. Police say they tried to stop Shelton around midnight just west of the Days Inn in South Moorhead, but he took off. They say he then missed a curve on Brook Avenue and hit a flood wall. Police say he, both he and Hidgedem tried to run away, but were caught after a short foot chase. Well, there's a possibility of some isolated showers this afternoon, but it's looking nice right now. Let's check in with meteorologist Robert Hahn. Robert? Yeah, there is a very small chance for a few showers. Most of those have gone away, but maybe an isolated sprinkle or two for a few folks as we head through this afternoon. Otherwise, we'll see more sunshine than clouds as we wear through the day and temperatures not too bad right now in the 50s and some low 60s, and we'll warm it up into the upper 50s and mid 60s later on in this afternoon. Winds? Not too bad as well, 10 to 20 miles per hour with some occasional stronger gusts, primarily out of the north and northeast as we head through this afternoon. There is the satellite, just a few clouds out there, and underneath those clouds, just a few sprinkles, and those continue to drift off toward the south and southeast and to dissipate as they do so. We'll see mostly sunny skies as we head through much of the rest of the day. Tomorrow, even more sunshine and warmer temperatures, and we've got even warmer temperatures to talk about on the seven-day forecast. How warm do we get? We'll let you know coming up in just a few minutes. Thanks, Robert. Mm -hmm. Moorhead City Manager controversy is back on the agenda tonight. Deputy City Manager Scott Hutchins had agreed to do the job, but last week a majority of council members voted to look for someone from outside the current city staff to fill in the temporary position. The controversy started in March when City Manager Michael Redlinger abruptly resigned after being called into an unscheduled performance review. 
Tonight's meeting starts at 530. You might remember him from his public support of Fargo police after one of their officers was shot last winter. Now he's back outside police headquarters in downtown Fargo to show support once again during National Police Week. Nicholas Barth of West Fargo stood in the same place in February after Officer Jason Mosier was shot and killed while responding to a domestic disturbance in North Fargo. Barth plans to be there again all this week to say thank you. And many people know the refugee population is growing in the Fargo-Moorhead area, but what you might not know is that people here could be considered at a risk of certain diseases, possibly by, brought by some of the new Americans. The Centers for Disease Control says tuberculosis is the leading cause of death from the infectious disease worldwide. Many refugees are coming from countries where TB infections are widespread. Some doctors are now recommending everyone living in a resettlement area get tested for TB. Tonight on Valley News Live 10 at 10, immigration and relocation reporter Bradford Eric walks you through the risks of your health. If you hurry, you can get in on a sneak peek at the Medora musical in Fargo. The Burning Hills singers and the new host of the musical will be performing at the West Acres Food Court at 1 this afternoon. This is a video of their show at the mall just two years ago. The Medora musical opens out west June 3rd and runs through September 10th at the Burning Hills Amphitheater in Medora. It's an embarrassing secret for a lot of people. Profuse sweat. Or there's a new procedure using microwave technology just approved by the FDA that could help. We'll show you how it works coming up. But next, we have weather to plan your day.